Hi friends, hope you are doing fine. So today I'm going to discuss some of the questions which are often asked when you are applying for a postdoc. And typically I'm presuming a situation where you have contacted a professor or a university, you have heard from them and they have told you that they'd like to talk to you. And typically nowadays this talking process takes place in Zoom, it may take place in Skype or Teams or one of the different online software. Now in most cases this will be a one-to-one -one interview situation but in some cases there may be a team of people also with the PI and some of the people who work for him being there. So there may be a professor and some of his postdocs and research scientists who may actually interview you. So let's get on some of the questions. So one of the first questions and this is somewhat of an icebreaker is to ask a candidate to tell us more about yourself and this question is asked from a professional perspective so essentially they do not want to know about your details in terms of your personal life or your hobbies and all that they want to know about you as a professional so you can tell at this stage your basic philosophy as a researcher what is the main problem you are trying to solve and your path as it has led to your PhD and what is your future plan as far as your career is concerned, how you have certain strengths and how these strengths may help the particular university or the research group concerned. Now here one of the things to do is to summarize your research work in one to th three sentences. So this is often very difficult to do but one of the strategies here is to pay a lot of attention to your PhD thesis abstract and try to write this abstract in one page and essentially concentrate on three sentences or three concepts. Number one is what did you do during your PhD? Why did you do it? And what's the thing that you found from your PhD which is worth the research community to know or which is worthwhile for the research community to know? So that's the first question. Now. The second question sometime people may ask you which is an extension of the first question is tell us something more about your PhD and this question will follow if you did not mention much of this in the answer to the first question about telling people about yourself. So again in case you are asked this question you have to basically summarize your PhD give the basic impact of your research as far as the PhD is concerned. Now one of the popular questions people ask you for postdoc is why do you want to work with us? So this is an important question because there are a lot of possibilities out there you can apply to various different groups so why you have selected this group and this question also lets the person or the committee understand whether you are actually interested in working with them or this is one of a plethora of emails you have sent out and you are talking to different people. So again here you need to give a professional reason and this professional reason should be such that how your research ties in with their research. So generally there can be two approaches to this. One is that you are doing a research in a certain area and this group is doing research in the same area and therefore you are going to go there and you are going to further grow your research with this group and your training is going to help this particular research group in becoming better in terms of its deliverables as far as different projects are concerned. Now a second strategy is that if you are working in a different area you may want to point out that how your skills would complement the skills of this research group. So this is often the case that in many situations you may find that your research does not match with the research of the people concerned but you may be bringing certain skills to the table which will help them for example you may be a theoretician and they are all uh, experimental people or vice versa you may be a person coming from a machine learning background and these guys are all people who do uh, simulation and modeling so again sometime such groups would require a person with a different skill set and this is what I call a complementary 
skill set. So uh, again, in many situations, complement is valued more than having the same knowledge as the people have right now. So again, here a mistake which neophyte candidates make is that they focus too much on themselves. And what you need to do is you need to focus on the research group concern. So you need to do some research on the research group, some of the papers they have published, and talk about how you can help them rather than make it a bombastic presentation in terms of how great you are, how great your thesis is, how many publications you have, what is your H index and so on. So again, these are facts which they know from your CV, they have figured out from Google Scholar, so you don't need to talk a lot about them. Now the next question is, in cases where you have written a proposal, is that they may ask you to tell more about your research proposal. And this is a case of certain possible postdoctoral scenarios where you are looking for a host, maybe it's a, a Humboldt or it's Fulbright or any of these situation, and the host then wants to have a discussion with you about the proposal. So in this case, you need to exactly the same way tell these people about why you want to do this research, what are going to be the main discoveries coming out of this research, what is the timeline which is likely to be there for this research, what are the likely publications you are going to get out of this research, and how this research is going to have an impact on the research group concerned as well as on your own particular uh, academic journey. So these are certain facts which you can point out here. Now, once again, a further question may come to you as to what are the facilities you need to do this research. And here, if you are an experimentalist, you need to spell out certain facilities and make sure that this group has those facilities because it's not very likely that they are going to get a bunch of equipment just for your visit there. So again, target the university based on what they have. And if you need those particular facilities, you can target that particular university. So in my case, one of the times when I had applied for the Humboldt Fellowship at the Max Planck Institute for Metal Research in Germany, they had a whole bunch of facilities to actually work on morphology of structures. And so I had targeted my proposal such that it would essentially focus on this particular problem. And so I could use the various facilities they have and complement it with my computational and theoretical knowledge of mechanics to actually do the research. So again, anything like that is much more likely to get through as far as proposals or committees are concerned. Now, one of the things people look at this stage are any red flags that in case you want facilities which are not there with the group and so on. So in, ca in that case, if you don't get the postdoc also, it should be okay because it's better not to get a postdoc than to get something and then go there and that thing should turn out to be a failure because that would be a waste of time and money for both parties concerned. Now, beyond that, one more popular question is, and this is often the case when you apply for postdoc in some foreign country, is that why do you need to go to that country or university and why can't you do this exact research at your own university? So this is a favorite question I find in many international postdoc situations such as Fulbright and so on. And uh, here the point is that your country or your university may also have a lot of facilities, libraries, equipment, computational facilities and so on. So why would you need to go to this country? So here again, one of the points is that you may have access to certain people who bring uh, depth of knowledge which you do not have in your country. It may be that there are certain facilities, certain libraries, certain equipment, computational facilities such as supercomputers which are out there in that university which you do not have. And uh, your answer here should be professional. It should not be that you may want to visit some foreign country because you like that country. It has to be totally professional that you have to go to that country to do your research and this research is very difficult to do in your own country. So you need to make this case to this particular committee here. Now, sometime one of the favorite type of question which some researchers ask is uh, they want to provoke you. And this is a tactic which is often used that if you discuss aspects of your PhD or your proposal, they may want to tell you that maybe your PhD is not of much use, maybe your proposal is very weak and so on. So this is a classic tactic which even referees use when they are reviewing a thesis or uh, reviewing a paper. It's a tactic of provocation. And the tactic of provocation is basically used to 
get some response from you and emotional but professional response which forces you to defend yourself and through the degree of your defense the people are able to figure out how committed you are to research whether you are a good researcher or not because in general what happens is that dedicated researchers are very sensitive to their PhD problem to their proposals to their postdoc problems to their papers and all such things and so any criticism of this work is not met very well by the person concerned and the person will essentially defend his or her work very strongly so that is expected at this stage and uh, this is a good sign because generally once you join the place as a postdoc they are not going to be there monitoring your performance on a daily basis but they know that if you are a sensitive person if you take your research very seriously then essentially they can leave you to yourself and you are going to produce some good work because you are very sensitive about that work you are very conscientious about that work and so on so these things are very important to keep in mind finally some points about uh, the modern format of interviewing via zoom or skype or facetime or any of these video aspects is that you need to keep some things in mind one is you need to dress professionally you need to have good body language and nowadays because you are not meeting people face to face you need to look at the camera of your laptop or for your phone so again this takes some practice uh, once you start looking at the camera then the people can actually see that you are looking at them so this is something you can check out on your own you can look at how you talk in your laptop so maybe you can record your own presentation or your own mock interview and then see how you are doing there so again that kind of helps your situation in preparing for these kind of uh, zoom type of systems so these were some points i had for you about a possible set of questions which you are going to be asked for your postdoc and again remember it's important to be very professional it's important to be courteous and it's important to be somewhat detached also as far as your postdoc interview is concerned so i hope you benefit from this video stay tuned to my channel and i will see you soon in a new video see you then